I'm Claire Lopez, a senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy. I've served as an operations officer for the Central Intelligence Agency, and more recently as a professor and analyst of the Middle East and counterterrorism issues. I'm one of 19 authors of Sharia, the Threat to America, available at Amazon.com and also at shariathethreat.com. The book argues that America's most critical national security threat is not kinetic terror violence, but rather civilization jihad, as practiced by Sharia adherent organizations like Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood, and its offshoot Hamas. Team B2 shows plainly that there is a link between the most virulent enemies of America and the pre-violent stealth jihad being waged by the Brotherhood through our security and intelligence institutions. And that link is mainstream Islamic law, or Sharia. As expected, there were all sorts of denunciations and ad hominem attacks directed towards us once the book was presented on Capitol Hill. And yet, no one from the Islamic world or the left has been able to argue with our sources, which are the most authoritative and mainstream interpretations of Islamic sacred law. Here's a great example. In a recent webcast, an associate professor of Islamic studies at Duke University named Ibrahim Musa addressed a question about Sharia, the threat to America. The question and the center's report obviously struck a nerve with Professor Musa. He launched into a rambling 15-minute response. As expected, he avoided the report's specific assertions about Islamic law or the threat it poses to American national security. Instead, he flailed away at vague accusations about miscommunication, willful distortion, and a flawed foundation. Shockingly, though, he also made some thuggish threats about getting your nose bloodied, badly injured, or landing up in a lot of trouble. Here's the clip so you can see for yourself. A group of prominent U.S. national security experts produced a report saying Sharia poses a threat to the United States. You probably disagree with them, but why should the public believe you and not them? Because I'm an expert and they are not. Uh, but, but, and, and I, you know, the, the, the question is that those people who wrote that report, and that is the report that involves, a, I think, the uh, Center for Security Studies, I think, um, that's the right. Center for Security Policy, Center for Security uh, Policy, that report uh, makes a big deal of what they call creeping Sharia, and also um, is you know lashing out against um, the uh, Wall Street that has accommodated uh, Sharia compliant finance and a whole range of issues, and that is because um, the Center for Security Policy report assumes that you have to deal with Islam and Muslims in the same way you deal, dealt with Soviet communism. So they are still the last remaining Cold War warriors. And, and so they've mapped the entire strategy of combating Islam as a secular ideology, not as a religion. So that's your first point of miscommunication. So they can talk as much as they want to, no one is going to hear them who understand Islam as a religion. So I always tell my students, that if you want to have a serious conversation in a study of religion with any people, you need to understand what those people are all about. Now, if you want to willfully distort your opponent, then you are going to misread your opponent. And when you're going to misread your opponent, you're also going to create bad policies and rules and strategies for yourself. And in that case, you're just going to get your nose bloodied because you've misread your opponent. So for instance, I know that my opponent weighs 250 pounds, and I know my opponent is a very you know, dexterous and ambidextrous individual, has a lot of talents, but I want to now imagine, no, that person only weighs 120 pounds. I don't think that person is very strong. I don't think this person has those skills, and then I'm going to engage in a battle with the person. I'm going to have myself very badly injured, and I think if you want to really see, now, sorry to use the kind of uh, confrontational example of a duel, but let's assume the people at the Center for Policy, uh, secu uh, policy Security, uh, they are concerned about Islamic immigration in this country, the prevalence of the Sharia. What it requires is that you need to have very serious understanding of what Muslims themselves understand about Sharia. 
because otherwise you are going to be engaging in a misreading of the situation. And unfortunately, some of the, I mean, some very important people are involved in this. Uh, James Woolsey, who was the former director of the CIA, is involved here. Uh, uh, General Jerry Boykin, of, uh, he became somewhat unpopular and because during the Bush era, for instance, he made statements saying that as a general, that his religion was much, much, much more superior to his Somali opponent's religion. And he made all kinds of statements that, that got a lot of media attention. And I'm not entirely sure that, that he would have the sense and, and objectivity of this. So I think this report is from its very foundation flawed because it's going to provide its readers a distorted understanding of what the reality is and what Sharia is. It's like telling Jews that, you know, halakha is something um, that they cannot practice and that halakha is, which is Jewish, uh, the equivalent of Sharia in Judaism, that halakha is, is, you know, should be something that people should not do so because uh, this is imposing certain kind of values. So are you, are you then going to tell people not to eat kosher food and not to have circumcision and not to do this and not to do that? That's exactly what you're asking Muslims when you start portraying Sharia as an ideology or portraying it as something demonic. And so I think the fundamental, why you should, why the reader and, uh, sorry, the, 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 the questioner should, should listen to what I say, but also many other experts, is that we know what we are talking about. If you're, we are going to engage in falsifying the facts, we are going to land up in a lot of trouble. And in our recent history, there's been a lot of doctored evidence provided to the American public and falsified material subject, uh, presented in the public. And we have faulted and erred much to our international standing and much to our credibility and with a great kind of cost to American blood and treasure. It's not even clear from the interview whether Musa has actually read Sharia, the Threat to America. A number of his own misstatements about Sharia provide us a good opportunity to clarify. In writing the report, we relied on primary source Islamic authorities in order to ensure accuracy in its references to Islamic doctrine, history, law, and scriptures. The principal legal resource most often cited is the Umdad al-Salik, or Reliance of the Traveler a classic manual of Islamic sacred law. Reliance of the Traveler is not only authenticated by Al-Azhar University, the premier seat of Sunni Islamic authority in the world, but also by Islamic legal authorities in Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the United States. Mm -hmm. um, Sharia basically means a set of moral values. Uh, that Muslims have developed over the centuries. Um, it basically stems from certain interpretations of rules and regulations that have been mentioned in the Quran, and there are few of those, and uh, a great deal of interpretation of the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad that is known as the Sunnah. And then the bulk of it is basically the work and interpretation of mostly men uh, in the um, throughout Islamic uh, history, and very few women involved in this in the interpretation of the law, although that is becoming increasingly um, uh, a demand by Muslim women, and more and more Muslim women are getting engaged in the work of understanding uh, what Islamic law is. So Sharia is basically, I would say, a, a moral code. Uh, it's these set of rules and regulations, but I can also put it somewhat differently and say, it's a set of sensibilities. Musa flubbed the very first question put to him, what is Sharia? This would seem a simple, straightforward question that any scholar of Islam would have no trouble answering. Sharia is Islamic law. He might have added that Sharia is an all-encompassing Islamic doctrine that includes legal, military, political, and social regulations by which Muslims everywhere and for all time are commanded to live their lives. Now, the good news surely is that millions of Muslims around the world do not follow the harsher and jihadist directives of Sharia. And it is applied in varying degrees around the world. Musa would have been on more solid ground had he noted that there are not varying interpretations of Sharia, only varying degrees of application. But he didn't say that. Why did he deliberately mislead the audience? 
But under no circumstances is any Muslim allowed to lie because lying is a major sin. And you cannot even lie to a non-Muslim. You cannot lie to a non-Muslim. You cannot lie to a Muslim. You cannot lie to... Otherwise, it makes nonsense, nonsense to this. The defeat and conquest of infidels by jihad is an explicit obligation defined in Islamic law. Deceit, dissimulation, and outright lying to infidels in the execution of jihad is also obligatory. Musa here takes his cue from Sharia. According to Shafi Fiqh, as stipulated in the Umdad al-Salik, lying about Islamic law is not only permissible for a Muslim, but often obligatory. Speaking of the threat posed to the United States, Professor Musa has been an outspoken critic of policies his adopted country has taken to deter and fight jihadist terrorism. Writing within months of 9-11, Musa said, U.S. national interests must be the single most catastrophic ideology of death and misery. Then, in 2002, he expanded on his theme. The world is in mortal threat with the United States being allowed to strut about like a colossus, he said. It is not fear-mongering to point out that mainstream orthodox Islamic doctrine, law, and practice are antithetical to the U.S. Constitution and our way of life in a democratic, free, and tolerant society. I encourage you to learn for yourself. Get a copy of Sharia, The Threat to America, on Amazon today.